What's up guys, back with another Twin Motion tutorial. I'm gonna show you how I created this exterior rendering using Twin Motion 2025.2. Let's get right into the video. All right guys, so as you can see, we have a multi-story office building and we have a lot of things going on. We have a lot of lighting, um, which I use spotlighting. And go here so I use a spotlight in some areas just to kind of light up the scene I have um, quite a few 3d assets as you can see we have some characters now some of these characters are three-dimensional and some of them are um, 2d where it doesn't have a three-dimensional side to it so I just wanted to test out some things just to kind of see how it look in my scene um, as well as we have decals so a lot of these things you can get from twin motion library so if you're wondering where those decal settings are you can go to objects decals here and in 2025.2 twin motion has definitely made um, some some updates and there's some very good updates you actually have the custom decal now where you can import your own decals or create your custom ones and just to kind of show you where these decals are so i just used a regular decal stain number three here and that that's no, nothing new but just kind of just kind of show you exactly where i'm getting some of these assets and objects from um so we won't be able to cover every new thing that's uh, going on in 2025.2 in Twin Motion. This tutorial is really just kind of helping you out, showing you how I rendered this exterior rendering using Twin Motion in 25.2. And um, guys, I hope that is helpful. Stick around because we're going to go through the settings and I'm just going to kind of give you um, step by step on how I created this rendering and how i set everything up so guys don't forget to smash that like button for me hit the notification bell and uh if you have any have any questions or things that you are curious about man don't be afraid to leave a comment down below in the description box as well as we do have this scene on renderreboot.com so don't forget to check that out as well all right so let's get right to it okay so I already set up my rendering scene so once you figure out that composition that perspective that you want in your exterior rendering um, you can use the you can use the grid to kind of help you out with that and what I mean by grid if I click on my image here I already have my path tracer uh, on and we're gonna turn it off for a second okay so we can go to our environment or let's go to camera. So to kind of help you set up your composition overlays, you can just go to composition overlays here and set grid. So now you can kind of line everything up the way you like it and try to get that, um, that nice composition, that nice perspective that you're looking for. And um, you can use that with uh, this composition overlays option here. You can change the columns, rows. I did change it at five because originally it was three. Just to kind of show you what it looks like. But I changed mine to five. Just kind of helped me uh, with my composition. All right, so let's go ahead and start setting up some of these things in our scene. Uh, so right here, I did keep it at HDRI and Skydome. But our um, HDRI is at noon clear zero one. I did change that. So let's see if we can find one that we're looking for. So I'm go to library and I'm gonna type in the search bar. I believe the one that we're looking for. Let's see, okay. So, so. Okay. 
It was a weird name that I used. Let's see. Let's see if I can find it. It was outdoor. It started with a K. Okay. Here we are. So I use this HDRI here. So we're just gonna drag and drop onto our scene here. So it's loading, doing its thing. All right, so as you can see, we do have our new HDRI applied to our scene. And I'm gonna close out. Let me go back to my camera and take off the grid. Now that we have our composition set, we'll click none. Okay, so let's go back to environment. So I have HDRI, my Sky Dome set, and I have my new HDRI selected. So now we're gonna go and look at our other options here. We have intensity, rotation. Right now the intensity is set to one. I believe that that's fine for now. You can always adjust that intensity um, high or low, however you want. Just make sure that you're paying attention to the amount of intensity that you're setting in your scene. You don't want your scene to look blown out or or look too intense. So let's look at our rotation here. So our rotation here is really rotating our HDRI and that's gonna kind of help determine a good position for it. I'm gonna set it to 254, okay? So now we have our details here. We're gonna select directional light, go here, and we're just gonna click match HDRI. So I want that directional light to match my HDRI. Therefore, we don't have to play with the rest of these settings. All right, so now that we have that set up, we can go to camera now. And now we're gonna play around with our exposure. So our exposures um, are already auto exposure. It's already checked here. And I believe that's fine. I want to change my exposure just a little bit. Is that one? So let's change it 1.35. And as you can see, that exposure um, brightened up my scene just a little bit there. And so my white balance is at 6,900. I want to bring that down to 5900k so that kind of made my scene uh have a little bit of a blue tinge to it so just kind of example if the higher you go the more warmer your scene uh intends to look so i didn't want quite a very warm scene I wanted a kind of a cool scene a cool temperature scene so we set it to 5900 I didn't put a 10 on it. We're going to keep it at zero. So here we have our local exposure and I'm going to enable my local exposure. Okay. So when we check mark our enable for local exposure, that unlocks our other, other sections here with highlights and shadows. So I would definitely want to play along with my highlights and for my highlight, I believe brought it down just a little bit and for my shadows I'm gonna do one I'm gonna crank it all the way up and that way when we enable our shadows you're getting all those unique areas where you want your shadows to cast in your scene and right now we're gonna go to lens and our focal length is at 17 so you can play around with your scene how you want but as you can see, the further you go back, the more warp your scene looks, and it doesn't look realistic at all. Um, so we're going to do 18. We're just gonna move up just a little bit, okay? All right, so we'll use focal length. And here we have our vignetting. And in our vignetting, our vignetting is just gonna darken, darken our corners of our scene here. And I don't want it at 100%. I want to bring it down to 65%. So as you can see, that brighten up our corners just a little bit. 
and that's ideally what I'm looking for guys don't forget to smash that like button for me hit the notification bell okay so now that we have our vignetting set we have other options chromatic abrasion we're not going to use that here uh, we're going to actually hit our parallelism and that's really just going to uh, ensure that our vertical parallel lines appear vertical regardless of the view angle of the camera so always check mark this guys because if you don't you tend to get some weird um, your your perspective or your composition starts to look a little weird and it doesn't come out very well okay so depth of field we're not gonna use that in this scene here now because I applied a certain lighting I did use bloom and flares and I did increase my intensity and I did change the texture of that so and what I mean by that is if you let's quit our mode so here I do have some lights here well I don't have lights I have actually a texture so if you go to um, your material picker here and I click make sure we click on the right portion of it so you can see I have neon zero two applied to it so that was something that I use um, from my user library I believe so I go to textures okay I didn't have it there so you can go to materials and we're gonna find where where did I find that exactly so let's see go to neons and so I use one of these materials here I use neon zero two and for these can lights that's what I use and I apply it to all these can lights in my uh, in my building so what that allowed me to do is it allowed me to utilize the um, intensity of my bloom flares so right now is at five so I did crank that up to ten and right now you can kind of see them brighten up just a little bit and also I believe I use star filter for X so when we do render you'll start to see that um, that star filter uh, come out in your scene and it actually adds a really nice touch to it so it's just something that I start to experiment with with my exterior renderings and I believe that I'm going to explore further as well so you can change the lens flare and I believe I brought that down to 0 0.15 and lens dirt I actually added um, a lot of lens dirt so I added to 5.80 so usually when I'm, I'm playing around with these, just testing it out, just trying to see uh, what kind of results I can get out of this scene here. And I advise everyone to just take your time, play around with these settings, get comfortable with it, and just try to figure out what works and what doesn't work. You know, I think that um, those are some important things to take note of is just try to figure out um, what looks good to you and study other uh, architecture and just try to apply what you see in real life to your renderings because that's what draws out that realism for you okay so we already played around with our composition overlays I already showed you guys that so here we can go to render and we'll start we, we will start to really see um, more of the adjustments that we made so if we go to path tracer here so now you start to see uh, my scene rendering and we have it at low quality so I want to crank this up to a higher quality to 2048 and our max bounce is at 15 I'm going to make that 30 and I'm going to select emissive materials and 
emissive materials just kind of influences the bounce of lighting in my scene. So we're going to click on that and I'm going to click the denoiser to remove the image noise from my scene as well. Okay, so we did that and my fireflies, I'm going to bring that down to eight and that just kind of controls the visibility and the exposure of the firefly artifacts in my scene as well. So we're going to make that down to eight. Okay. So now we're going to go to FX and FX is where we're going to look at refinement, trying to figure out the contrast, the saturation, clarity and sharpness. And these are all things that you guys can experiment. And, you know, sometimes you got to kind of play around with it and just kind of see that perfect balance for your scene. So for my scene, I use 38% for my contrast. And my saturation, I use 45%. And for my clarity, I actually boosted up my clarity 60%. So when I boosted up my clarity, and this is this is a new thing in 2025.2, is that it actually made my image um, look a lot a lot clearer, and it brought out some of the detailing in my facade, which I really really like. And as you notice, I do have the parallax windows that are um, that new feature inside this scene already. This is the day scene. I did do a tutorial. Um, using my night scene on how to do the parallax windows guys check that video out if you haven't already um, but I'll show you exactly how I use the parallax windows new feature uh, for into in motion okay so let's get back to it so now we we boosted my clarity to 60% I'm going to bring down my sharpness to 25% Okay, so another new thing here is, uh, I want to say you pronounced it as LUT. And I think that this is pretty cool. And I believe I'm going to expand on this a little more going into standard and custom. So that's something, we're going to keep it as standard for this tutorial, but I did use custom. I mean, I'm actually going to do a, another tutorial on that. So I want to expand on that, just kind of show you that process and what I did and how I got those results. So we'll keep, keep it standard here on that. So go to image. Okay. So right now we have our format at full HD. You can crank it up to 8K. And as you know, if you crank it up, to 8k or higher you want to go to details and it says use the rendering for high resolution so use the tile rendering so we're going to click tile rendering so that's when we export that image at um, higher resolutions that it doesn't lose its quality okay so guys i think this looks pretty good i think that um you start to see some of those effects and um we got a great rendering a great uh, day rendering see some of the lighting that's coming in and I also use kind of some motion blur on these cars here I believe I'm going to create another tutorial on how I created that motion blur so guys stick around we got a lot of cool new tutorials coming up and um, I appreciate you guys support don't forget to smash that like button for me hit the notification bell and uh, we'll be back with another one